Boxing Gyms, G-E-M-S, Boxing Gyms. Check it out, study some of them videos there. The guy's phenomenal. His name is Ryan, I'm telling you. All right, you'll pick up a lot of knowledge there. Fight fam, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification. Class in session. Undisputed 154 pound champion Jamel Charlo is a great fighter that can do it all for the most part. He can fight at every range, moving in any direction. However, his opponent Tim Zhu just might be more formidable than most thought. Let's get into it. When Charlo's at his best, he's controlling spacing and pace with an active lead hand. He jabs, probes, and feints with the lead hand, maintaining distance at range or on the outside at his terms. He controls the space between him and his opponent with punches, punch traffic, or an extended lead hand. Both help defensively as it discourages or at least hesitates his opponents as they wouldn't want to run into resistance immediately while trying to close distance to attacking positions. Eventually, he turns the positioning dictated by his jab into variations of jab cross or jab overhands, which have been vital to his success in most fights in his career. At his best, he also has a subtle step back game when opponents start their offense from the outside, keeping the theme of maintaining spacing and controlling positioning and pace. Then eventually he turns the step backs and the counters variating the punch selection. Primarily with the left hook, Charlo is also excellent at blocking and shooting. The significance of his left hook block and shoot is that it primarily counters a backhand as opposed to a typical jab counter, which gives him an edge that fighters who normally lead with the cross aren't used to. Opponents reaching with the backhand or lunging are almost assured to be caught clean. A staple of the Derek James staple is utilizing the jab to lift a high guard up and attacking the body. Every DJ fighter seems to acquire the setup in their arsenal, and Mel is no exception. When distance is closed on Mel, he often defers to ducking and weaving. At his best, he's ducking and smothering his opponent's offense, which sometimes leads to a clinch or hold and reset. He also uses a particular tactic to land offense off ducking, which has some risk, but it's largely unexpected. Whenever Mel ducks to evade towards his lead leg, instead of the normal clinch and hold, he switches it up and looks to take advantage of that loaded lead side and counter with the strong lead hand hook, which has been very effective. However, the risk is taking the head off the level and center line to slip, then coming back up to the A slot to throw the hook. It can run you into typical combinations like the 1 2 3 or 2 3. While he bends at the waist to duck, Charlo doesn't bend at the knees to stab jab. 
not changing levels properly while throwing a jab to the body leaves you in an obvious vulnerable head position to be countered as you transition weight to the front foot. The risk is multiplied when you're the taller fighter that's punching down in the first place. He's literally bringing his head down and forward towards his opponent's punches from the outside or mid-range. When Charlo decides to get on his bike and use a lot of movement to control distance, he often makes the mistake of probing mid-range with the lead hand or throwing single mid-range jabs. Again, the problem in a nutshell is that a jab that doesn't need a step to land on target is the weakest punch that can be landed at that range while also being the most counter punch in boxing. Committing to that jab or throwing it with some steam will transition your way to the front foot at a dangerous range in which even if successful, the landed jab isn't likely to hurt your opponent. So at the very least, the fighter needs to recognize the risks and act as defensively responsible as possible if a mid-range jab is used. The most repetitive and effective blows landed on Charlo are often counters to single mid-range jabs. A mistake that Zoo has already taken advantage of. Well, the right hand of Zoo, a little bit uglier for Gusevich. We've seen in this fight that. What relegates Charlo into the positioning against or near the ropes that leads to the exchanges where he throws a single mid-range jab to be countered is his tendency or inability to control ring positioning or lack of ring generalship. At his best, he controls distance with an active lead hand. At his worst, he gets happy feet and continuously backs up to the ropes when it isn't advantageous to do so. Keeping the center of the ring or keeping real estate is essential to controlling distance. Charlo often makes the mental mistake of giving it up. Pivotal in a control game is physicality, especially if that control game just involves clinching to stop action and inside positioning. If you're not aggressively clinching and stopping your opponent from punching and forcing a ref break, you're often left in a position to be hit. Unfortunately for Jamel, Zoo is a physical fighter who knows how to break the clinch and gain positions and leverage to land hard punches. A lot harder for Gache to, to counter punch because as soon as throwing there. The issues with ring generalship, controlling distance, and a lack of physical controls often lead to a lot of 50-50 exchanges. Charlo has a good beard on him and great power, especially with the lead hand hook, so it's somewhat typical for him to get the best of these exchanges, whether he takes punishment or not. However, there will likely come a time where the risk won't be greater than the reward. We'll take a look again at the left hook. A nice short left hook on the inside, Abner. Yeah, nice uppercut. But it was it was a short left hook that got him right in the chin. One of those punches you don't see. And it, it, it almost, you could see that it didn't have that much power, power, but clearly. His opponent is undefeated contender Tim Zhu. The son of boxing legend Costa Zhu brings in a sprinkle of high-level skills, which could make for an interesting match. Although Tim prefers to come forward and apply pressure, half of his game is counterpunching.
When Tim closes distance, he has a subtle but effective control game, often using tactics like posts, frames, and head control to make easier transitions from defense to offense, or vice versa. Well, I'm going to do a But what he's most likely to do mid-range to inside is utilize his very good probe game. The point of his probe game is to occupy the opponent's guard away from the intended target area then attack the opening. Tim excels utilizing probes with either hand and then opening up variating his attack. that are very effective one of them is the uppercut and he can use the either the right or the left do a good attacker is a variety of punches and we saw it there that and i don't know if you noticed but one of those I mean, he's just a very good body puncher yes he is yeah. continuing tim's theme of high level tactics mid-range to inside he also manipulates the guard by using peels which is simply a punch that misses to the opposite side of the high guard on purpose to peel that glove down then hook off the peel Adversely, Tim's default guard is an active and an active high guard, which all subscribers know has more cons than pros if used constantly. One of the major cons of an active high guard being the moving shields can be fainted out of position as Terrell Gosh showed us. Then the inactive high guard can be manipulated by jabs which can break holes through the guard for the cross to sneak in. Speaking of jabs, the other issue with Tim's inactive high guard is that it wasn't very effective with jab defense. When Tim wants to pressure to eventually counter punch, he can literally become frozen in stance waiting on the counter. That means that every movement after being frozen is 100% reactionary and requires a great deal of anticipation and quick reflexes including the tuck, catch, or blocks with the lead hand to defend a jab. If Jermel Charlo was at his best and on his game, poor jab defense alone could be the difference in the fight, but even if the jab is just for defensive purposes for spacing, it could lead to a long night for Zoo. Related to the reactionary counterpunching, Tim has to anticipate moving his head off the line. Again, it takes great reflexes to pull this off consistently without getting hit. but even when he leads with probing, he tends to keep his head on the center line or in the A slot and has been punished for it. Beyond the somewhat consistent rhythm steps that his past opponents largely haven't taken advantage of, Tim gets a bit lackadaisical with his footwork especially when applying pressure. The issue is mainly crosswalking in the stance. Crossing your feet trying to get into stance leaves you off balance and often takes an extra step when you're trying to get back in position, leaving you vulnerable to be attacked for longer than necessary. Has landed 20 
four body punches, and most of them came in that last round. And they're not pity pat punches. No. <laughs> and it's going to be so hard to push uh, Tim Subat. He's trying to say he's having me so far. In this uh, sixth round, he's having his way. Boy, remember round one where that right hand's different now. Yeah, he's Duchesne up against the ropes and gets himself out of there. He's taking some... Without proper footwork, which would centralize around balance into stance, Tim could get himself into some trouble with the fleet-footed fighter who uses lateral resets as traps and is as strong as Jamel Charlo. This might not be the fight I thought it was gonna be before the film study. After studying film, I still feel that Charlo has all the tools to get another knockout victory under his belt. However, if he makes the mental mistakes that he has made in the past with ring positioning, this fight could turn out a whole lot tougher than it needs to be, and he might be relying on his power to bail him out. Betting wise, it's hard to trust what seems to be a lack of ring IQ. So I'll still go with Charlo by KO as my pick, but I'll likely hedge the bet with Zeus straight up. Let me know who you got in the comment section. As always, the sports book link is in the description if you want some smoke. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell before you leave. Peace.